Welcome to the Tides Institute and Museum of Art. In, we're located in the former Eastport Savings Bank building in Eastport, Maine, built soon after the fire that went through the entire downtown. And we bought it two years ago and with the hope that we would bring it back in a historically accurate way, preserving the best features of the, of the bank itself. We've been in it for two years, living in it and working with our architects on a architectural plan and how the best way to use it and we're now raising money to build bring back the north wall specifically put new windows back in so that they'll go back up into the arches the original style windows and reorient our entrance to the ground floor we are a year-round cultural institution we are working to collect works of art about the region, the entire Passamaquoddy Bay region from both sides of the border, Canada and U.S. And we have them housed in this building and a series of exhibitions year-round. The mission of the Tides Institute is to collect and preserve cultural materials um, about the greater Passamaquoddy Bay area and to foster new works. Uh, we have printmaking and letterpress facilities on site and we're hoping to work with artists in the area to make new work. The area has been very depressed for a long time and has gone through a, about a hundred year um, process of decline and a lot of people know what the ramifications of that are but they don't know what has been done here that has been something to be proud about and our collection, um, we've been doing a lot of research as to the artists that are from the area or artists that pass through the area and we've been working, raising money, purchasing, having some donations of those artworks and bringing them back from all across the country. So this institution will have a collection that people can be proud of. It's their artwork that has never been put together and displayed ever before. The painting is called View of Passamaquoddy Bay and it's from about 1840 by a French painter, Victor de Grayley. And it's based on the etching shown to the side uh, by Bartlett, which was published in a book in 1839 called American Scenery. And de Grayley never came to the United States. He did the painting in France based on what he saw in the book. And he was also kind of a marketer of sorts. He knew he had a good painting and he ended up painting a number of them exactly the same. We know where three of them are. One's at the Farnsworth Museum, one's at the Portland Museum of Art, and the third one is in the collection of the White House and it hung um, in the White House during the Nixon and Reagan administrations. This is a painting by John Doyle, who's a Canadian contemporary painter, and we found this in the Toronto Gallery and felt that the Cliffs of Grand Manan were something that we should have here um, on view. We had someone come in one time who was, had vertigo and she stood somewhat away from the painting and couldn't stay in front of it for too long without having to turn away because she felt it was quite uh, realistic in terms of the drops on Graham and Am. This area in the gallery is um, where we hang works on paper and watercolors, um, drawings and any work that is prone to have degradation from ultraviolet light coming in from the window so it's a protected area within the gallery space. And this photograph is by a photographer named George Daniel who worked in Maine in the 30s. He came up to Grand Manan to do a documentary photography work on um, herring fisheries. And this photograph is called Feeling in the Ware, Grand Manan, and it's from 1937. George Daniel was known as a more um, for his fashion photography work. He did all sorts of other kinds of photography, but when he passed away recently, this his estate had a body of the whole body of work from the Grand Manan project. And so we're raising funds. We have this one in our collection now, and we're raising funds to get approximately 40 other photographs from that Graham and Ann series. Okay, I wanted to show a print that was done last summer in one of our printmaking workshops. This summer we have three scheduled. This is a monotype still life that was done on our etching press downstairs. I wanted to thank you for joining us on your short visit to the Tides Institute. We hope you'll come in person. We're open Tuesday through Sunday in the summer from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. We're only closed on Mondays. 
And you can also join us. We have a fundraising trip to St. Andrews on a charter of the Sylvina Beale coming up on August 22nd. And we have all sorts of choices for what you can do that day with us and it will be part of our capital campaign fundraising drive.